One, two. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. We thank the Lord for this Sabbath. And uh, we are going to have our family Bible lesson class today. I would want us to kneel down and seek the Lord in prayer. Holy Father, who art in heaven, we thank you, our dear Lord and Savior. We thank you for giving us such an opportunity this Sabbath to come before you. We pray that you may lead us and guide us and bless us through this family Bible lesson. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. We thank the Lord for this opportunity. How many children are in the congregation? Children, by a show of hands, can you raise up your hands? How many children? Okay. That is good. How many children of God are in the congregation? By a show of hands. <laughs> Amen. We are... Happy to be children of God, and uh, God wants to bless us as his children. So for the family Bible lesson, uh, it includes all of us. It is a family. The word family uh, incorporates uh, the father, the mother, and who else? Children. They are the basic unit of or composition of family. So when we speak about family Bible lesson, we have number one family, which we have described. Then we have the Bible. Can everyone show me his Bible? Carry up your Bible. Carry up your Bible. Yes, don't carry the phone. The phone is not a Bible. Carry your hard copy Bible. And uh, children, how many have their Bible in the congregation? Show me your Bible. Oh, my. Every child, every parent should buy his or her son or daughter a Bible. In fact, when they are, when the, the mother delivers, do you know the first present you need to give your child? What present do you give to your child at birth? How many have ever done that? <laughs> By sure word. The first, the best gift you need to, to give to your child is the Bible. And that Bible should be read to him or her always, most of the time. Even if, you know, even if the woman is expectant, sometimes you just read for the baby, the what? Do you know they listen? They hear from month five, six, seven, eight. They begin at month five, they begin to hear sounds. So you need to read so that when they are brought forth into the world, they are able to, to know that there is something. I had my mother or my father uh, reading for me. So the family Bible lesson entails the family Using the Bible to draw up lessons, illustrations, and teachings every day in, uh, in their, their daily life. During devotion time and even during the time when you are having nature work. 
he used the family, you use the Bible as the lesson book. And there are many, many things that we can teach our children to the Bible. Every, every subject can be taught through the Bible. And that is why we are having family Bible lesson. So that our children, our family can have a, a deep grasp of the word of God. Every time, everything they see, everything we touch, we hear means the, the parents and the children or the child, everything they see, they base their education or learning or teaching from the word of God. Isn't that a beautiful aspect of lifestyle we need to embrace for our families? Yeah, uh, I know we all know about the subject of true education. We have known it more in theoretical aspect, but uh, the practical aspect has not been applied. So in this Family Bible lesson, I'm going to teach us how practically we can learn the Bible, we can interest our children and even ourselves in studying the Bible. So that the Bible do not just mean something, a, a book with some black uh, ink in it, but it means a lot for the child because they will be learning. It will be the source book that the family is based on. So in family Bible lesson, uh, it begins, uh, so how it is practiced, during our morning devotion and evening devotion. Now, who should be the priest in the home? Who should be the priest of the home? The father should be the priest is to offer the morning and evening oblation. Uh, the evening, the morning and evening sacrifice is the leader. But in case is not there, or the father do not know this uh, noble responsibility. Who is to take over? The mother. And the mother is the greatest teacher, the principal teacher in the home. So in the family Bible lesson, the father should lead in gathering the family, the household in the presence of the Lord in the morning, in the evening, during the devotion time, so that they can offer sacrifice to the Lord, thanksgiving offering, and also supplicating for other people. Now, family Bible lesson also goes deeper for those who are going to learn, uh, who are desiring to do uh, homeschooling or to education in that in all the subjects, be it mathematics, be it sciences, uh, the geography, history, we are all going to derive all our examples from the illustrations from the word God, be it mathematics. You know, I won't go deep into that, I'm just trying to highlight. And it's very beautiful. If you have mastered, you'll find it beautiful here. Addition, subtraction, and division. Everything from the word of God. Geography and physics and biology. All those sciences. Very beautifully illustrated from the word of God. So you need to be someone who prays and God gives wisdom. And then in the family Bible lesson, one of the things that uh, you must know is that the object of true education is character building. Is what? Is what? Character building. That is what we want to drive hope in the mind of our children. Character. We are not just learning mathematics. We are not just learning those sciences for the sake of having the theoretical knowledge, but we want 
character building character in the in the father in the mother in the child and it first begins with the teachers our teacher teaches jesus christ you know that you know who knows what matthew chapter 28 no chapter 11 verses 28 says yes so can one of us rise up and mass and 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 say it out yes elder dan matthew 11:28 Mm -hmm. I shall. Okay, who can help? Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so come unto me. Is the call Jesus is saying? Is calling us unto and say, "Learn of what, of me." So when we come to the school of our master teacher Jesus Christ, what do we learn? Meekness and what? Loneliness. So in the school of Jesus Christ, we it teaches us character first, right? Before teaching us the doctrine, the character must be instilled. So in family Bible lesson, the most important thing that is to be dri driven home in the minds of the disciples or the 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 children or, or the how do you call those who are in the classroom students or pupils is the character. And how many characters do you know in the Bible or? Just uh, by mentioning the you know, character of love, character of why can't we? Children, which characters do you know? Love, happiness, joy, what else? Kindness, humility, meekness, politeness, purity. Yes, uh, yes, all those characters we must attach all our classes or all our lessons with uh, with the character. So in the family Bible lesson, if we have, let's say, a mathematic class, addition, we must attach a character into it. Do you get me? You must attach what? Character. Let's say I want to, for example, uh, I want to, I'm teaching addition. And say two plus two equals what? Four. Now, um, I may like here what we are going. Uh, we are going to learn here. I'm. I'm going to. What I'm going to demonstrate for us is based on the character of diligence. Diligence, right? Now, for example, I want to teach my child to be diligent. So here we have additional uh, a class on mathematics. Additional, addition. So we have the 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 sign plus. All right, so two plus two I know is equals to what? Four, and then we shall go through the Bible and trace where maybe four is mentioned. For example, who can give me a, a verse that has maybe four in it? 
What? Daniel 1, what does it say? Yeah, the four Hebrew boys. So in the four Hebrew boys, you can teach very many lessons from there. Who are they? Who are the four Hebrew boys? Daniel, Ananiah. Oh, you. All right. Yeah, we are giving the original names. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know them? And Daniel. Yeah, so we can teach from the Bible. We know the character they had. What character did they have? Okay, can be diligent. I need another character. Obedience, right? We can say one of them was obedience to the word of God, right? They say, we shall not bow down to the word. To the image that you've made. And purity. Didn't they practice purity? How did they practice purity? Yes, they did not defile themselves with a portion of the king's meat. So everything, so two plus two, we have uh, said four there. And we also know of Revelation. You know, the revelation that has four, Revelation chapter seven, and I saw four angels doing what? They're holding the four winds of the what? Of the earth. I'm just giving us how we can go through the Bible. Research. So when we are going to read those verses, as for children, you know, we have very young children, very young children. They may not grasp a lot of, the, of it. So you may paint a picture, or you may have a picture of maybe winds and there the child is able to learn. When you're going out and the wind's blowing, remember the four winds from the corners of the what? Oh, remember the four Hebrew? Boys, so I say, my son, what did we learn in the morning about the four Hebrew boys? And the child remembers if they are able to uh, uh, to remember. You know, children speak. Children speak a lot. They will ask you questions. Oh, daddy, I, oh, the wind is blowing. I remember the four Hebrew words, <laughs> four Hebrew boys. And, you know, <laughs> the child will be able to begin grasping the things in the word of God. So that is just an example. So everywhere you are walking, you are able to, oh, this house has how many corners? The four corners. A young child, four corners. But what do you remember in the Bible that, or where in the Bible has four been mentioned? So you can go through many, many verses that has four in them. And if the child is maybe between age uh 12, uh, 10 to, to 14, you can give them an assignment. They go to the Bible and check for that. But if they are younger, they can bring flowers, eh? flowers with four petals, right? You know, you began teaching plants there, biology, in a very simple way. Now, let me continue. So in this class, I'm going to give a demonstration on how we are going to tackle our family, family Bible lesson. Remember, it begins in the morning. In the devotion. Devotion time. So I'm going to give us an example of diligence. So in the morning when you wake up, we are the father or the mother should direct the household that today the character that we are going to learn and practice is what? Diligence in every activity that we're going to carry out in the day. So it must have a memory text. You must have a what? In the family Bible lesson, remember one to master the Bible, we must have a memory text. This is the text. If you have a wall, if you come to my house, I have a wall, a whiteboard, and there the text for the day is written. Today we learned about the key text was the memory text. They say 2 Peter 1 verses 10. Can we all read together? 
Can we all read together, please? Wherefore? Uh -huh. Yeah, we shall never fall. Wherefore, breath, uh, wherefore, they rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. So this is the memory text. You can uh, develop a song from it. And it is very beautiful to develop a song from it. Yeah, I never sat down to, I just did it this morning to make a song out of it. But you can make a beautiful song from it based on which voice you, you have on the way you want it to be sung. And then if your family is having these instruments, the child or the father or the mother can't play the what? The guitar or the violin or the piano and you sing the memory text as a song so that the, the, the whole day, that is what they will be mastering. In a song, it is very easy. A child who is not able to read, child of three years, not able to read well, but they can sing it in their mind. When it comes to a time for reading, it will be very easy for them to read the Bible. You know that? Yeah, so we must have a memory text for the day in the family Bible lesson. We are learning the Bible. And the song must be recited, the memory text, must be put here. So for example, and beside these things, give all diligence and to your add to your faith what? Virtue and to virtue what? Knowledge and to knowledge what? Temperance can when I say what you 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 you, you read that thing. Oh they are so far. Sorry. And to uh, to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see a pharaoh, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old seat. Wherefore, the rather brethren, Give diligence to make your calling and what? Election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. So our children, our the family will read all this. So, and we pledge ourselves at the end of the devotion that we are going to do what? To give diligence to make our calling and election what? Sure. Yeah, so that we make sure that these characters are imprinted in our in our lives the family bible lesson remember the objective is to build the character of christ in the life of the child in the life of the family christ in you the hope of what of glory are we together yes now i'm going to give an illustration color illustration to make us learn about the character of diligence. Someone who is diligent is someone who is determined, someone who is continuously pressing on uh, day by day to achieve a what? A goal. So at the end of being diligent, there is a price. Are we together? Yeah, so... Uh, Maybe the father and the mother can you know if the child was given an assignment, clean this house. Be diligent to clean this what? House. So the child should be taught resilience, the character of diligent, determined to do something. Wash or spread your bed in the morning when you wake up. Diligent to spread the bed every day. I know there are some people who wake up minus or without spreading the bed. Whether you are a man or a woman, you must spread your what? Your bed. And make sure that the beddings are folded well. That is a character of what? Being diligent and neat and order, orderliness. So if you will not be able to achieve, in the family Bible lesson, you will not be able to achieve the character if you, the father or the mother, is not practicing it. Do you think the child 
will be diligent if the father is not? It will not. If the mother is not diligent, it will not. So this family Bible lesson is helping all of us to develop the character of Jesus Christ until it become part and parcel of your life. It's a very easy way. If you are talking about character perfection or perfection of Christian character, this family Bible lesson help us to achieve it. Are we together? Are we together? Yeah. So the day must begin with you having a quality, character quality to learn and practice in everything, be it cooking, be it farming. Uh, you tell my son, let us do all diligence to finish this portion of the farm. Let us be diligent to water our flowers or plants. So everything, character is attached into it. Now, can we name some of the colors that we know? Now raise up your hand. Children, let me begin here, two children. Which colors do you know? Yes. Yes. Pink, all right. White, yes. Blue, oh, this side, let me see some, yes. Red, okay. Which color? Purple. Yeah, so we are going to drive uh, to, to give some illustration here. We are going to learn on colors. So colors alone, we, with the colors alone, we can learn, learn a lot of things from the Bible. You're going to see a lot of things in all subjects. If you, the only year you can learn about colors, you know that? And still not exhaust this Bible. So I'm just going to give us an example. So we have red, blue, yellow, green, white, purple. So these are the colors that we want young children. You know, these young children can learn colors. They love, children love colors. You know that? Yeah, walk around, you see, the world is colored. You know, God is a lover of the, of the beautiful. He colored and painted the whole world with beautiful things, nature. So when you are walking around, however young the child is, they can identify color. So in your family Bible lesson, uh, we are learning about diligence. So we are going out to be diligent to identify colors and attach them to some verses in the word of God. Now, for example, this is now for children of advanced age. If you want to teach them, we have primary colors. Then we can mix colors. Then we can have secondary what? Colors. You see that? Can you see it? The people are behind. All right. So we have red, blue, and yellow as the primary colors. These are the main basic colors. And then we, when we mix colors like red and Blue, what do we have? When we mix red and yellow, what do we have? What about blue and yellow? Green. And can you name some of the secondary colors? Yeah. So we are learning about colors, but our character quality is diligence. So for example, I'm going to teach us how to identify those biblical color representation. For example, red. Red, a symbol of what? Sin. And then we are going to read from the book of Isaiah 118. that say, come now and let us what? Reason together, say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as what? As snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be what? They shall be at school. So our children, our child, in the family Bible lesson, we've just read this card. But I want us, uh, this verse, sorry. I want a young child, maybe of age three, to know what this red color means. So you have a red. You will have some painting of red somewhere. Tell him this is red. It symbolizes sin. 
All right? And then the verse that is there is Isaiah 118. You can make a song out of it. And the child sings. For a young child who is not able to read, sing that verse every day, read or sing. Isaiah 118. And then you go deeper and you think, uh, you tell the child about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Tell them, my son, my family, my daughter, the Christ died for us. He shed his what? His precious blood for us. So it, 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 it is not just learning, the theoretical learning, but the child is brought into, uh, into uh, in the added attitude of identifying himself with Christian life, knowing that, oh, we are not just mentioning colors here. There is someone called Jesus Christ who died for us and he shed his blood for us. He say, my son, have you ever cut your hand? What comes when you cut your hand? Blood. And are you happy when there is blood trickling? No. And what is associated with blood? Pain sometimes, right? Yeah, so uh, do you want to, to do uh, something that will wrong God? Child will tell you no. Are you, are you following me? We are in the family Bible lesson, instilling the character of Christ in the mind of our children. So uh, that is what you are going to, to do. And then in the family Bible lesson for the younger children, we must give them some homework to do. They are doing the painting. So you must buy for them some coloring materials. How many have bought for the children? Right, please do, do diligent to do that so that everything they are learning they can uh they can do it, they can paint it. Uh, this picture I, I put this is altar of what burnt offering. What are this? What is this? Altar of incense. Do you know one thing that the priest or the high priest used to do to the horns of this? Uh, items. What was being put there? The blood. It was smearing the blood here on the horns. Le like Leviticus 4 verses 18, and he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar, which is before the Lord, and is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour out all the blood at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So the child can have a paint and you will have a picture in a paper, maybe, uh, that is not colored, should be plain picture of this item. And then you tell them to paint where color red should be. If you taught the child the sanctuary, they will be, they'll know where to do what? To paint. Are you following? So we are going through the Bible. Here we are learning the sanctuary. We can learn many other things with the color red. So like in Exodus 25 verses to speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me all an offering of every man that giveth it willingly, which is in his heart, you shall take my offering. And this is the offering which you shall take of them, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and God's hair. So there are some colors that God wanted the children of Israel to, when they bring some items, they bring them in certain colors. So, like we have the blue. What does the blue represent? The commandments of God, the law of God. And with that alone, with the blue color that you are learning, the child is able to identify the commandments of God or recite them. And the character that you will be learning there is obedience. You tell them, we have learned about color blue. It represents the law of God. And we need to be obedient to the law of God. Are you willing to be obedient to the law of God? By the way, every day in our family altars, or during this day we are learning, in the morning there should be a call made. Don't just read a verse. You're doing a devotion and just any like that. There should be a call made. Today, let us consecrate ourselves and commit ourselves to being obedient to the word of God. Make a call. 
as a family, as a father who is presenting this word of God. Now, like in Numbers 15, 38 and 39, uh, it says, Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garment throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribband of blue, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you use to go to a, to go a warring. So the child should know that the color blue represents uh, the love of God, which we need to be obedient unto. So not just mentioning colors. You can go deeper into studying how the high priest used to put on and all those things. Uh, and then uh, we have the color white. White for what? Christ's righteousness. So we have the color white represent the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Revelation 19 verses 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of what? Of sin. So every time you're reading through the Bible and you see a color, you should attach it into maybe a character that God is trying to teach us. And the older children should be given that assignment to check and see. Another thing we can make our young children to know these colors is they have a book where they, for example, if it is plums, they pick plants or flowers with different colors and they paint them in their book and write down their red, blue, and by that, they can even learn different kinds of plants. Are we together? If they're in advanced age, you can now begin teaching different categories of plants. And even uh, the herbal class can now begin. Maybe this one can cure this. So it is ever a, cl a, a, a class that cannot end. You cannot exhaust it. It becomes so interesting but you must be able to attach uh, character quality unto it. In Exodus 28, verses 2, and you shall make holy garments for your brother Aaron for, for what? For splendor and beauty. If the child is at the age of learning how to do tailoring and you have uh, certain garments with different colors, they're not just doing it, uh, we are making a white, cloth or a blue suit or a dress. No, no, no. They must learn the importance of that. That this garment I'm making, it must be for splendor and what? Beauty. It must be uh, that which pleases the Lord. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garment of what? Salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. So it becomes more deeper. The white garment we are making is about the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And Christ promises us that we shall, he shall joyfully, uh, he shall joyfully glad us with his garment of salvation. So when the child is putting on his blue blue shirt or blue trouser or whatever, the child remembers, oh, this is about righteousness of Jesus Christ. This is about the obedience to Jesus Christ. So everything is about learning about Jesus Christ. Are we together? Yeah. Now we go to green, green color. We are learning about green color and what is usually green? The vegetation, plants are green. Most of the plants are green. What does uh, plants usually grow, right? Plants grow and even children grow. We all grow. You tell uh, my daughter you are young now, but you will be growing like you see this tree grow. And today we planted maize, it is growing. And after three months, we are going to have what? fruit, right? Are we together? Yes. So God also wants us to grow and later on 
with the time we have, the fruits. And what are those fruits that God wants us? What do you think? What fruits? Fruits of the Holy Spirit. So the child must know that, oh, it is not just about eating this fruit today. No, no, we are not just eating, but he or she identifies herself with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And you can master the fruits of the Holy Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22. How beautiful is family Bible lesson. It makes us to master the Bible in an easy way, in a very easy way. So 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So in Psalm 52 verses 8, it says, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. So in the Bible, the righteous, the people of God are identified with the green color. There are trees that grow, trees of righteousness. There are trees of righteousness. We are the planting of the Lord. Yeah. So even if you are, you are having your daughter there, and today we are going to buy some tree. There must be an activity to do in the family Bible lesson. Today we learned about trees. The color green. We are going to buy some tree that is green. And then we plant. As you plant, you tell them, you know, you remember that verse in Isaiah that says, we are the trees of righteousness, a planting of the what? Of the Lord. So we plant, but the Lord has also planted us here so that we may show forth his righteousness. Amen? Yeah, this is how to carry out the family Bible lesson. Learning the Bible, building the character of Jesus Christ. In Jeremiah eleven sixteen, 16, the Lord called thy name a green olive tree fair and of goodly fruit with the noise of a great summer he hath kindled fire upon it and the branches of it are broken so the child will master this verse he knows about olive trees and by this age uh, when there is the age that they can identify and maybe read and write they can identify different types of trees in the word of god can you tell me just four Someone to stand up and tell me four trees mentioned in the word of God. Cypress. Sycamo. <laughs> what? Fig tree. Now, when you identify those trees in the Bible, they must be identified in the Bible, right? And attach a character to them. Sycamo tree. Who? Who? Uh, who, uh, who was on top of a sycamore tree? Who? Zacchaeus. He wanted to see Jesus Christ. So when we step or when we are on the top of the tree, we need to see the character of Jesus Christ. So you teach your child, oh, Zacchaeus was short, but wanted to see. We are fallen short of the character of what? Of Jesus Christ. You remember that verse? Yeah. We have fallen short of the glory of what? Of God. So, blue plus yellow forms what? Green. That is a secondary color. Green, a secondary, a secondary color. So, tell me the color of gold. Who knows the color of gold? What is the color of gold? How many minutes? Over. Add me five more minutes. What is the color of gold? <laughs> the golden canvas. Do, do you remember? Um, the yellow is gold. I, I think gold is yellow. You people have never seen gold for many times. You only see these ordinary stones. But gold is... Uh, is uh is yellow in color, right? But gold in the Bible uh is uh attached to faith. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So our faith 
will be tried. So when we are identifying yellow color, we attach it to, to faith and we must be purified more than the gold of office. So you tell your child that we must sanctify ourselves and purify uh, more than the gold of office. The candlestick was made of gold, beaten gold. There's a deep lesson here to learn. So the child should be able to identify this and the, based on different ages, you should be going deeper to learn on the, on the characters that are mentioned here. And we know that we are the light of the what? That candlestick produces what? Light. It was made of, mol of, of molten, of, of gold, beaten gold, pure gold. But it was producing what? Light. Yes, then we should let our light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So let's finish up. Blue plus yellow is equals to what? So blue for the commandments of God, which we need to offer obedience to. Yellow for what? Faith, which we need to practice in our what? Lives. The righteous ones are to obey the commandments of God and have the faith of what? True or false? Yeah, then in Revelation 14 verses 12, the Bible says, here is the what? The patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. And then we end there. That is our family Bible lesson for today. And you can go deeper, deeper, and deeper, and be diligent to know the colors there and what they represent. So I'm going to call for children. Do you have a, a scripture song that you can sing? I want a child or children who can sing one scripture song. We can come in front here. Please come so that we can close up. One scripture song. Please hurry up. And this was where I'm beginning for a business. I do a bench. I do know what she And this was where beginning Shall we bring to the world of the world? For now, 
Most gracious Father, what in heaven, we are just so much thankful to this opportunity that you've given us a privilege that we may be able to learn of the character of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that you may give us wisdom, that we may make our family Bible lessons and studies and classes to be interesting and joyous and inspiring in our lives. That makes us to be consecrated and cut out for the service of God. We pray that you give us wisdom. You give us, you give us the desire to do that you want us to do. Be with us and bless us together. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen.